Thank you, Denise, and thank you, Linda and IBCBA, for sponsoring and putting on uh, this opportunity. And thanks to you, all of you, which is more than we expected, uh, for coming. All right. So this is what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to talk because I can't. I have to. Uh, talk a little bit about the Village League. 
We're going to do something a little different than what I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. I've made many, many presentations like this. And so we're going to go over the, what I call the problems and possibilities and the path to incorporating as a city uh, in a summary fashion. Because many of the things that we'll be talking about, you can go to our website and find out about. And I want to spend a little more time talking about the vision and answering and addressing what seems to be recurring themes on concerns and issues and questions, which, which means what does better government look like? How do you get there? Is it financially viable? And you know, how will that work? So we're going to go through a, a fairly brief presentation, and then we're going to do answer your questions, which Denise is going to present to us. So if, as I'm talking, or, Ke or Kevin's talking, and you have a question, you want to get it written down, and I guess back to Rhonda? Okay, and we'll take them out, and then she'll, she'll present them to us. And again, any questions we don't get to tonight, we will write the answers to and post them on the website. And any issue that you have, you can, of course, post on the website, too. Are you going to do your presentation first, or are we going to explain what to do? Uh, we'd like to start right now. So okay. if you have something you want to explain. Just how, to, how we're going to do the questions. Okay. Oh, not, well, I'm going to let you do that. So why don't you do why don't you? Denise is going to talk about how the Q&A is actually going to work. All right, the first purpose of our meeting tonight is to have a question and answer time regarding our community becoming a city. No decisions have been made. This is your opportunity to ask questions about anything you're wondering about. Frequently asked questions are posted on the city of inclinevillage.com website and look for more of these meetings in the future. So tonight, questions can be turned in to Julie and Blaine either at the entrance table or you can pass them to either side to the middle aisle, the side aisles, we'll pick them up. Rhonda will also collect questions and then we'll uh, compile those and I will read them off and Kevin and Todd will answer them. And as a reminder, please turn your cell phone <laughs> <laughs> All right, without further ado. Perfect. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> so, just in case you haven't lived here very long, you may not be aware of the Village League. It was formed 20 plus years ago by Marianne Ingmanson, and it, uh, who we all love dearly. And it was designed to correct or address situations that might be detrimental to the residents of Incline Village and Crystal Bay. And this is um, basically our fourth initiative. Now, Marianne uh, unfortunately passed in 2013, and I became the president and have been that ever since, and has been in the hot seat. The, uh, Village League is a 501c3, and everything that we've done and we do is through contributions from the community. Everybody is a volunteer, so except to pay for professional service is a completely 100% community-supported, volunteer-operated organization. Probably the thing, and I want to just speak on it briefly, that we're most known for of late because we worked on it for 17 years, is the Nevada Property Tax Revolt Initiative. And this was our response to Washoe County's attempt to unlawfully collect uh, excessive property taxes from us. And so the work that we did there has, as a result, returned, or will return, $100 million to every single resident. Thank you. And by the way, if you haven't, if you're sitting here and you haven't submitted your claim for your refund, 
please do so. There's still about $20 million to, to come in. Now that goes to the people who lived here back in 2003, 4, and 5. But there's actually a much larger benefit from that work that we did that I want to talk about. And that is that at, in 2003, what Washoe County did is that they raised the rate that we would pay taxes for property tax to a level that nobody else in Nevada would pay for 35 years in the future. In other words, we were paying back in 2003 what no one else in Nevada would pay to 2038. So the work we did rolled back those assessments to the 2002 level. And the amount of money that we're not paying because of that rollback is at least $300 million and growing. So even if you didn't get a refund today, tomorrow, and, and for years to come, you are paying lower property taxes. So that's $400 million. And to put that, I want to say a couple things about that $400 million. Um, first off, we, we pay Washoe County about $23 million a year in property tax. That $400 million uh, is worth 17 years of Incline Village's contribution and property tax to Washoe County. Think about that. Another way to look at it is that the last city to incorporate in Nevada was Fernley. And at the time they incorporated, they were about 9,000 people. They had about 100 miles of roads, just like us. And that 400 million would pay today, and that Fernley is now 23,000 people, so they were two and a half times our size. It would pay their city budget for the next what is it, 36 years. So, if, when you start asking questions or thinking about, can we afford to do this? In a very real sense, it's kind of been paid for, but the money that, the money that you have that hopefully you've spent any way you want, children's educations, new car, house, mm -hmm. upgrade, what, a vacations, whatever, is $400 million. So we are a community that has ample resources. And the last thing about that number is the county fought tooth and nail to keep it. All right, so they could have funded another Incline Village for 17 years with your money, but they don't have it, we have it. All right, so what, what are we doing here? We, so we, we didn't just um, wake up one day and say, gosh, we need to be a city. What we did is we listened and we watched the community respond to situations and problems that were arising. And so we concluded that we would produce a petition to incorporate Incline Village and aspire to become the best local government in the United States of America. Now, over the last three years, when I say we listened, I, I've got a 14-page single-space document that was prepared by one of our volunteers who sat and listened to community forums and other venues of all of us talk about what our issues are, what our challenges are, what doesn't work, what needs to be more better and different. And I'm not gonna read it. Uh, a lot of it is sort of summarized on this screen. This is a list of problems we have and opportunities that are there for us. And we got a microphone that's um, misbehaving. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. But the theme of the problems and the opportunities sounds like we don't feel like our voices are being heard. In fact, we're being ignored. We discover others doing stuff to us rather than for us. And, and when they do, whenever it's done, we get told about it way too late. That there's been a precipitous 
reduction in services. And I've lived here 31 years and I can tell you, you used to be able to get a driver's license here. Uh, Sessor had an office here. You could go down and get a building permit. Uh, we had a constable. Uh, we have a court, but that's about ready to disappear too. We're just getting less and less and less and these are all things that Washoe County uh, provides us. And then we have problems and there's a few and they're parking and housing and traffic jams and you know, various service things. And if you look over this list, none of them fall into the purview of IVGID, right? So we have this quasi-government, but it does sewer, trash, water, and recreations. Anything else, that's Washoe County. Uh, two quick examples uh, that I like to mention. One is, uh, the, situ the thing that's going on down there at the old elementary school where suddenly we got a bus station coming that the community when surveyed and asked do you want one of those overwhelmingly said no but we're but we got one headed this way anyway another real key indicator that we need something different that we noticed or I noticed uh, is, and they're gonna do this again, it'll be interesting. Uh, they put on these candidate forms for our IBGID trustees and they, the, and they collect questions from the community. Say, you know, tell us, the an tell us the answers to these questions. So they had five questions at the last form and these eight trustee prospects were faced with three questions of the five that had nothing to do with IBGID. They were out of IBGID's venue so you couldn't possibly can't answer that question as part of your campaign promise to do anything because it had to do something that it doesn't influence or control so i'm skipping the part where i talk about all the options we considered and the pros and cons on and just say this is where we ended up we ended up believing that the best option was for incline village and crystal bay to incorporate as a city and why is that well the pro is you get the autonomy and the control that we're seeking and we believe we need we have true home rule authority and and this is an important point if you want it it's it's yours i would point out that attempts and there's been five of them to become a county or a town or something like that. All five of them have failed. They were not succeeded, we'll say. <clears throat> and in part, that's because they relied on the goodwill of others to agree and approve. In this case, what I call the, two, the NRS 266 route, if we want it, it's ours, okay? Now the tough part of this route is um, we're going to have to, as a city, should we decide to do that, take on some services. Uh, doing this petition work is not easy. It's a bunch of heavy lifting, but the Village League and you and all the volunteers, and there's been many of hundreds of hours already contributed to advance this effort, will do that work. And here's the heavy lift. One third of the registered voters here have to sign the petition before it can go forward and become a ballot. So that's what the Village League and its volunteers are set out to do. Um, and we're simply giving you a choice to decide to become an incorporated city. That work involves deciding what services, because as an incorporated city, you're still part of the county, what services we keep, uh, we leave with Washoe County, and what services we take into the city. And one of our mantras is don't try to fix something that's not broken. So if there's something we think is working, we're gonna pretty much leave it alone. So uh, one of the things we're not gonna touch is the beach deed and our exclusive access to the beaches. 
recreation, the fire district, that's going to stay all the same. Uh, now this could change, but that's, what, that's our outlook on it right now. But the key thing is that whatever we do, it's going to be driven by our community's preferences and priorities. So imagine a place where you can walk to a meeting like this and participate in the planning and the progress of your community and its neighborhoods. Or imagine that when you have a problem, you can get it attended to uh, expeditiously. Or where your specific needs and requirements are anticipated and provided for. Or where you decide, I'll use the elementary school as an example, what enhancements and improvements are needed and completed for the benefit of local residents and local businesses and where your preferences and priorities rule the day, and where instead of being 10% of one representative's district who lives and works an hour away, you're 100% of five representatives and a mayor who are your neighbors, who you routinely encounter at Rayleigh's and the post office and the beach and the restaurants, who live daily with the very government outcomes that they create for you. So could that arrangement be satisfy our needs and create a type of place in which you might want to live? That's one of the questions. So what's happening right now? So this is what's happening. We are in listening and development mode. We are putting together a plan which will be converted into a petition for your consideration. We want any and all good ideas we can possibly get. We've invested in substantial legal support, seven lawyers over three law firms, just to say, to guide us and advise us and keep us on track and make sure that we don't make any missteps that we regret. We are reaching out to others who have gone down this same path. We're in contact with the people in Fernley, who incorporated 20 years ago, they, they kind of messed it up, and they know they did, and they're very happy to share with us their trials and tribulations in a way so that we don't make the same mistakes that they made. And we're looking over a lot of historical records so that we have a good feel of what works here and what doesn't. And ultimately, we will make the choices or propose the choices for what services to do and not do and we'll create a petition and we're going to put it before all of you. This is going to be before the end of the year. And you'll look at that and you'll provide feedback and then we will hone and improve it and revise it as needed until we have something that you can buy into and fully support. All right, I have a new reveal tonight on the petition. A map. So a petition uh, for incorporation under NRS 266 has eight sections. This map, in the words I'm going to tell you, address five of them. The first thing is you have to have a name for your city. We've elected to call it the city of Incline Village. Not a big, not a big, uh, a big stretch. Uh, you have to have a boundary, and let me step over to the slide and wave my arms around a bit. So this is a map of Incline Village, and this red line is the boundary that we are proposing for the city. There are a bunch of boundaries that affect Incline Village. There's the Judicial District, there's the Fire District, and there's IVGID. And this is different than all of those, but it's probably closest to the judicial district. And you notice that it um, <clears throat> goes along the California border almost up to the rim across, across um, the Mount Rose Highway down right through the middle of Marlette Lake all the way down to Carson City, which is down here. So, and then it extends out into the lake and along the California border. 
22.5 square miles. Now, if anyone's wondering, like, why do you have a, a city boundary around the lake? It's because we expect that we will be providing services inside the lake. Uh, and also, I think most people know that th those people who live on the lakefront, their properties run out into the lake, and we don't want a situation where the city truncates in the middle of anybody's a property. And basically, so what we've done is we've taken the southwest corner of um, Washoe County and it becomes the city of Incline Village. And I think if I ask people to say, well, what other services could you provide out there on the lake? I'd, better, I'd get a lot of interesting responses. All right, so uh, it's about 22 uh, square miles. You're supposed to express it in acres. It's actually in total 27,840-acre city. Population, uh, the census is a little behind. We think it's going to be about 10,000. That's one of the other things you have to provide. And you have to uh, demonstrate that you're suitable for incorporation. And there are six metrics. I'm not going to go into them. I'm just going to say we, we passed them all. We easily pass them all. So there's the six qualifiers, eight mandatory elements. I just told you five, or showed you five, between that and what I said, five. But there's some certain things about the petition that you need to keep in mind. First off, <clears throat> the petition is, if you sign it, it's a decision or support of holding a vote to approve a city or not. The after signing petition, there's no city. There's a ballot measure to vote for a city. So you haven't approved a city. It's basically saying, I want the choice to make a decision to become a city. With that petition drive, we are scheduling for the spring. It'll start probably April or May and go into July. You only have 90 days to collect all the signatures. So we will continue with your help and support to get the word out you know, about what's going on. Uh, we will finish the beach deed review and all the legal stuff continue to work on this, continue to accept the inputs of volunteers. Uh, we will plan and staff a petition signature campaign. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do and it's also not a cheap thing to do. So the more of you that come forward and pledge your support for signing the petition, the less expensive this whole thing will be because it's, it's starting to look as much as $80 a signature times 3,000, think about that. But we will do that and we finish it and once we launch the petition drive, we have 90 days to collect those 3,000 uh, signatures. All right, I'm gonna pull back here and ask Kevin to come forward to talk about what the vision for good government actually looks like and how do you get there. Now Kevin's professional life is all about government. He studies government, he runs around the country, and I thank him, the whole world, uh, supporting and consulting with local governments so that they can become better local governments and then get on a path of continued improvement. So this is his life, he's volunteered to do it. Kevin's just one example of a fabulous volunteer that we have living here in our community to help with things like this. So he's gonna go through what I think are really important considerations when you think about a government called the City of Incline Village. Kevin. All right, thank you. <clears throat> and thanks for a great turnout. I love the standing room only, huh? This is, this is the energy we're gonna need to pull this off. Very cool. Okay, so, um, I'm going to get a little bit into the details and weeds um, of you know what we're kind of going through and thinking about right now, and also talk about some future opportunities we'll be having to talk about the you know making a really good government here. Um, so just for starters, for perspective, 
the area that Todd just talked about is 0.34% of the county. Uh, some of you may not know the county goes all the way up to the Oregon border. <laughs> it's a gigantic, weird county. Um, when you look at the population, we are about 2.0% of the total population of the county. So this is the 10% of one representative problem. Registered voters, we do a little better. We skew a little older. We are a little more civic-minded because of that. So we're more like 2.7% of all the registered voters. And if you look at all the parcels that people live on, we're actually 5.1%. And that's getting a little more substantial, isn't it? We do have a lot of uh, seasonal folks that live here, of course. And lastly, you think of the property taxes. If you've ever wondered, we pay 9.5% of the property taxes. So we're punching above our weight a little bit there, for sure. OK. So um, basically, what you can see is as you move from area, population, to voters, to parcels, to property tax, we're skewed a certain way. And this is actually a very resource-rich community we're happy to, to be in. Um, but the quality of services we have may not reflect that, right? <laughs> murmur, murmur, murmur. <laughs> okay, so, so when you think about the services that we would want to take over from the county, we kind of put things into three buckets. And those buckets are the first one which we think of, okay, this is a problem to fix. And that problem is going to be a low quality service, a cutback service, a low amount of service. If you think about things like snow plowing, policing's been cut back, the court might go away, they just took our constable. You can go on and on. Those are things where you go, whoa, what's going on here? They don't care. Or frankly, maybe they're trying to get some of that $100 million back through backdoor means. There's a second category where you get, look at the services and you look at the amounts and what they're spending and what, you know, what it would cost here and you go, okay, it's okay, but maybe we, if we took it over, we could save money. You know, we could do it for less. We'd be able to uh, not have as much of a need maybe for our share of the costs or maybe we could do it a little bit better. Those are kind of the marginal ones. But then there's a category also where it's like, you know what, it's totally fine. Uh, it would be a big pain in the butt to take it over also, um, and there's certainly some that fall in those obvious categories. So when you think about the services that Washoe County does in which we could take over as a city, this is the framework that you can use yourself to think about some of these things. And I'll show you an example of this. So right now, we have services spread out across NT, NLT FPD, right, the fire district. That's a fire logo. We have IVGID, water, sewer, trash, and recreation, okay, and we're all all 10,000 of us are paying for these services, and these are the organizations that are currently providing them. And then you get into Washoe County, and it puts some up here that fall into the fix it bucket, and a couple that fall into the leave it alone, it's totally fine bucket. So police has been cut back, snow plowing. It's hard to find a way around on the sidewalk in the winter, isn't it? Um, roads, planning and zoning, and the, and, the, and the courts. Those are some obvious ones that fall into the, yeah, we can take this over and keep it and improve it. Uh, then there's things like the jail. It turns out that Washoe County actually has a, uh, a, a world-class facility that people come to visit. <laughs> they do a really good job at jail. Uh, and voting is, you know, the elections are pretty good. That's a big deal to do that. So um, those are some examples. So one of the big questions is, okay, so what is this? Whoa, I can do that with my hand. <laughs> offhand so what are the um, yeah what does it look like when you create a city well what happens is the money that we're paying for a particular service right, the cost of providing that service now go to the different entity and so it really is wait for it this is what happens boom okay so we basically move the money and the responsibilities over to a new city. And where we draw that line between Washoe County and Incline Village will depend on the exact set of services we take over. Whether we take over all of them, uh, all of a service, whether we take over part of a service, whether we take over none of a service. Okay, make sense? Okay, yeah. 
And yes, those green arrows for people in the back, those are money. <laughs> okay. All right, so I um, was asked to talk a little bit about the good government part of the, part of the, the plan. And um, we're going we're gonna to go back in time here because I'm a government nerd. Okay, so uh, the, the impact of good government is remarkable around the world. But in 800 BC, in ancient Greece, you with me still? <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, the median home, the size of a median home was not that big. Okay, 800 square feet. In 300 BC, anyone want to take a guess at what a median home might look like in Greece? Bigger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. Okay, interesting. I'm going to uh, punish you with some history then. 3,600 square feet. It's bigger than my house right now, for example. Probably some of yours. Um, so what happened there that was so uh, interesting in terms of creating wealth? The Greek income around 800 BC was down here. It doubled. 500 years later, the wealth increased dramatically to the extent that people had houses that were more than four times the size. And then something else happened after that. And it went down. Not to recover until a few decades ago in Greece to the level they had 2,300 years ago. Whoa. Anyone know what happened between 800 BC and 300 BC in ancient Greece? Democracy happened. What? Democracy happened. Yeah. Oversight, self-government. Democracy literally means the people, the demos, rule. They make their own rules, kratia. And what that meant is that the government actually stopped being predatory, wasting money, doing dumb things to cause problems, starting wars, mostly, and actually focused on creating a, a space, a free, uh, free society, really, where people could make stuff, build stuff, associate. And of course, the learning that we still have today happened in that period as well. Famous breakthroughs in philosophy, geometry, mathematics, and so on. It was a magical time. But it doesn't have to last forever, unfortunately. And around the world, you'll see the poorer countries have other ones that are struggling with, with really bad governments. And I've visited far too many of them in person. Um, to give you a little more modern take on democracy, anyone here from New England? Wicked good. <laughs> All right, so I grew up in Massachusetts, actually, and my elementary school had a Revolutionary War cemetery in it, and every once in a while we'd lose a ball in there or something. So it's kind of in your blood. The first town meeting, which is the modern version of democracy, happened there in 16... 29, it's the first records we have, but all the new towns were set up as a kind of quasi-utopian idea of, let's make our own rules, do our own thing. And today, after compounding that for almost 400 years, you've got the top public schools, you got the most educated population, and you have one of the top incomes in the country. That's the value of good government, compounding over time. Uh, there's also an interesting thing where all the towns in New England are pretty much well managed and they don't go bankrupt, they don't have mismanagement challenges, they don't have corruption challenges. And yet, the cities in, in New England, follow along with me here, the New Englanders, right? Legendarily bad, legendarily corrupt, like literally electing people from jail to be mayor. Boston, Providence, Bridgeport, all over the place. And the only difference is the oversight. Are the people really in charge? Are the people really being served as a whole? Or are people kind of doing their own thing? Five member board versus a thousand person town meeting, for example. So those are the kind of, kind of mechanisms that turn out to be really effective, just as they were in Greece, where you had a 500 person assembly for, the, for, the, for Athens, randomly selected, by the way. Doesn't that sound interesting? You think we'd do better with random selection or election sometimes? <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> It actually solves a lot of problems, may create some, but um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a, a high level way of thinking. A lot of mechanisms that we've learned over the last 2,500 years to make governments do a great job of serving the public as a whole, okay? So think of this as a, we're going for a five-star government, not a four, not a three, not a two, not a one, not a zero, which is basically going to jail. 
Uh, and there's three things to think about. There's, is it effective? Right? Is it doing the right things? Is it doing the things we want it to do? And then is it efficient? Is it doing them right? Is it wasting money? Is it doing things for the least cost for the value? And then is it also equitable? Is it, doing, is it serving everyone? Or is it serving factions? And that's really important to make sure we're not messing up. <coughs> and just to highlight a few of the, the ways you can see this, and there's, there are really good governments across the country doing everything I'm, I'm talking about right now. But serving the public as a whole at all times, that's essentially the one job of the elected official. Uh, it's not to do what they want. It's not to do you know, other things. And also to operate within clear delegation and authorizations from the public on down. So narrowing down until they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do and not improvising on their own and doing something we haven't authorized them to do. Part of that means they're making decisions with actual standard processes and data. I'll give you an example, one of those in a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, there's ongoing auditing and reviews. In fact, back in, back in Rome 2,500 years ago, the elected officials didn't get paid until they were done with their term. <laughs> Interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of lessons over 2,500 years of government experiments around the world. Um, and that includes, you know, officials being legally accountable for fiduciary duties and laws. Uh, that, that happens if you, if you ever watch like a, a political thriller and, about Denmark, there's a person who lies and is going to lose her job in the Senate. Think about that happening here in the US. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> okay, so continuous innovation. There's not just this baseline of doing the basics, but there are a lot of governments out there that are doing a good job, uh, trying to get better, and even trying to get better at getting better. And that's the level that we want to think about with the, with the one that we want to set up here. Sound good? All right. Cool. Uh, we do have one thing in the FAQ that also highlights a few of these. And, and if you haven't been to the FAQs at the cityofinclinevillage.com, we do address a lot of questions. So some of these keys are pulled from best governments across the U.S., um, many who I know personally. And you know, it's design and operate, professionally certified city management, extensive training for officials and staff, strict operating procedures that are transparent and can be monitored. Solely serving the public is how everything fits in, all the operating procedures and everything else. Um, the ability for residents to control, monitor, and hold the government accountable. So, you know, again, in New England, there's, um, if, if something gets passed, there's a protest referendum that can get filed. You think the government's doing something they shouldn't be doing or that people don't actually want. A lot of examples like that you can do with data, with surveys, and so on. Uh, and then really, ultimately, the ultimate government <laughs> is one that does a great job regardless of who is in it. It's a system. It's a, it's a process. I actually have a, a friend who thinks about this stuff a lot, and he says, you know, the best government is one you'd be totally happy with your enemy running it. Think about how good that would be, how, how well designed that would be. So um, I'll just give you a couple of, couple of teasers, and there'll be a, as I'll mention, we'll do a workshop on this, because we do want get, to get some ideas that you may have, is that this may spark. We usually start a meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, right? OK, so that's cool. Uh, it's only been around for like 70 years, believe it or not. But what about this instead? What about a binding oath of service? I solemnly swear to serve the public, the whole public, and nothing but the public. Wouldn't that be a little more practical? Yeah, exactly. Number two, someone says, hey, we need to do X, right? And all of a sudden, everyone's scrambling to do something. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, the standard operating procedure there, though, is OK, maybe. But what problem are we solving with X for everyone? And then how do we know that's the most important problem for the public right now? In other words, OK, great. Now what are we going to stop doing? And there's pretty standard procedure for working through everything in that kind of fashion, creating community priorities and then working through and then updating those over time. Which one do you like better? B, yeah, okay. Uh, another one is, you know, we get our tax reports that shows what we're paying to who, but there's plenty of people doing detailed tax receipts showing what your money's being spent on and what you're getting. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh-huh. And then finally, there's this, um, it's called mayoritis, where people get elected and think their job is to do what they want to do. And it's an inflammation of the ego. That's where the itis comes in for you Latin scholars. Um, so that's one thing that can happen. And sometimes just out of, they just don't know. Like they're getting yelled at by people. It's really hard uh, to be in that situation and know what the community wants. The alternative is to have the public as a whole define priorities. 
And so this is an example of a city in Utah where it turns out that the importance of physical safety, 74% of people had it ranked. That's really important to them. And yet the satisfaction was only 18%. So that's a to-do list right there. High importance, low satisfaction, that's what the government needs to do. Low importance, high satisfaction, that might be something where some smaller special interest groups got a hold of it at one point, right? So uh, just some little teasers there. Again, we'll be having some future workshops on this, talk a little bit more about good government. I do teach it around the country and uh, toss other features we can, we can potentially use. All right, so the conclusion here, I'm gonna give you, first time I ever showed someone this, this mission statement. They said, that's not from a real government on earth, <laughs> right? I'm gonna read it. The government exists to serve the public. We put the needs and expectations of citizens first and take pride in delivering services of the highest quality. Does that sound like a government we like to be part of? Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, here's the sad part. You know where that came from? <laughs> That's their old mission. Unfortunately, they've updated it since then. Okay, well, thank you very much and appreciate your questions. We have more blank white cards if you have more questions. Chris and Julie and Blaine are picking them up. Ron is compiling them at the back of the room. So everyone's question has been compiled. You may not hear your exact question tonight, but we're uh, grouping questions that are similar together. But we are keeping track of every question that you've submitted. All right, not surprisingly, the top the top questions so far are about money, taxes, and fees. What a surprise, huh? <laughs> so first, what studies have been done to determine the impact on taxes? All right, so, and I think you've heard us say this before, the impact on taxes is going to be zero because it's unlawful to change it. In other words, in the first year after you incorporate as a state, which always just for reminding people starts on July 1, your taxes cannot go up. So we, we don't need us we don't actually need a study, but we do need a budget, and a budget is what determines how much money we need. Now as we look at this, um, and we realize how much money we're sending for Washoe County. Uh, we believe that that is more than ample for us to do the services the way we want to do them here in Incline Village. And so that there is a strong possibility, not a promise, but there's a strong possibility when we develop the budgets, and you will see that we'll present it to you as part of it. Part of it. Yep. part of the petition um, that we won't the incline village part may just go down because we won't need that money so in, in the matter we do this thing is you assess your property you pay your property taxes and if your values go up you pay more taxes well we don't need to work that way what we should do is determine how much money we need and adjust the rate of taxation to match what we need and if we need more we raise it and if we don't need as much, we lower it, and we're anticipating that we'll probably be able to lower it. Yeah. Now, what would make it go up? Well, if you start thinking of things you'd like to have different here, so maybe you want a town center, or maybe you want whatever, crosswalks on every single street, or that costs money, but if we do that, it's because you raised your hand collectively and said we want that and we're willing to pay for it not because someone put it in there and decided to charge it for it um do you have anything you want to add to that yeah i just think that uh, the point about the taxes going up automatically in dollars is a really weird thing uh, i don't know if you noticed washoe county's budget actually went up about 20 percent last year wow. did you know that because their income from property taxes that were not adjusted went up 
course, that makes no sense. The budget should reflect the cost of providing the services, not the opportunity just to have get the extra revenue. So we have a, did you get batteries in there? That's nothing. I'll just stay next to you. Right. Or I'll just next this. question. I'll oh, combine a couple here. Will our property taxes go up, up, down, or remain unchanged? This is, this is and when can we see a proposed okay. budget? Property taxes up, down, or stay the same? So I, I think I just answered that, actually. <laughs> they, they stay the same, and then for the first year, and then they go up, down, and where they can most likely down. Answer the second half. All right, budget. So that, so I'm a, I come from a, basically corporate background. I'm a huge disbeliever in displaying uh, incomplete staff work. So when we have the staff work complete, we will show it to you, and that's going to be what's happening. It's being developed now. We're actually going to be doing several budgets and revenue forecasts. And this will be sometime between now and December. So expect something more like December. And then you're going to look at it. Uh, actually, the way we'll probably do it is many of you who have volunteered and who have actually credentials and expertise in this kind of thing, we're going to show it to those volunteers first so that we refine it to a point where we think it's ready for broad display. And then we're going to show it to everybody. And you'll be able to critique it, comment, well, what about this? There's not enough of this, too little of that. And then we'll change it. And we'll keep on doing that until we feel like we have a, a, a sufficient work product. But you're not going to see the first draft until we've completed the staff work. It's a lot of work. And unfortunately, some of it depends on some of these legal reviews that we're doing because those shape or define what services we will take and not take and how we will do that. Anything to add, Kevin? No, I think you nailed it. Okay. How will capital improvements assumed by the city from the county be paid for? I don't think we're going to pay for them. Yeah, can They're you can you allocated. can you restate that again? Was that just make sure yeah, I understand another, the question? Are you, it, no. If the question is assets that the county currently owns and operates in Inglewood Village right. that we've actually already paid or bought and paid for. Uh, we expect them to sign to us. Yeah, there's a process of uh, equitable apportionment of the assets that we would use. So potentially, uh, you know, police substation, uh, potentially uh, court building rent, you know, things like that. And that's part of the process after the ball is rolling on the city is uh, approved and we're now working towards creating it. A lot of things actually fall in that window. Move on to choice of services. What if Washoe County says we have to provide all services? I love the question. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the that. evil Washoe we, County version. <laughs> um, so they're obligated to provide services to the public. So they don't actually have the option to not provide the services, but we do have the option to take them over. So uh, that, that's pretty much the answer to that one. Will we have our own planning department? You bet. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a planning department. And we're going to have a building department. And I think we'll ultimately have some sort of a community planning commission. And so when you, if you want to see Incline Village look a little prettier, or anyway more better and different, that would be something that we'll do here. And we won't be driving down the Reno's. Uh, to try to convince the Washington County to do something more better and different with respect to land use uh, and development here. So, no, that's going to be, that's actually, frankly, that's one of, I think one of the basic, biggest advantages of incorporating as a city is we get control over what's here, how it's used, and what it does. When we tried to become a county, Washoe County stopped the effort. What circumstances have changed so we can establish a city? 
Yeah, I'll take that one. So, uh, so Todd mentioned earlier that there's been previous efforts, uh, five by some count, to create something. So to create a county, you actually have, the le have to have the legislature create and approve the county. That's hard. In fact, there was even a situation where we apparently got a school district actually approved to the point where it hit the governor's desk and he vetoed it. So uh, depending on the kindness of strangers is not a great strategy in this, in this scenario. Uh, I, uh, one thing I might add though is, you know, there's 17 counties in Nevada and if Incline Village was a county, there would be seven counties smaller than Incline Village. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and of course, even if we did want to create a county, the first step would be to get something up and running as a city before you'd even consider having the capability to expand. When will a comprehensive feasibility study be done? Let me take that. I can take that. Yeah. Why do you yeah. That? So actually, before we even um, uh, got this got this rolling, uh, we did a feasibility study on uh, what are the problems that are out there, what are the services that are you know, being underperformed. As Todd mentioned, he, he's, been, he's been doing it for years. Uh, I, that was his. Uh, so uh, we did, yeah, a uh, bunch of volunteers actually did it. Yeah, including me, yeah. yep. So let, let me uh, mention, we actually have the feasibility study and the financials and the detailed uh, budgets and staffing uh, it was done previously for the entire county, which was done by a professional organization, uh, which basically shows, you know, we, if, if it was our choice, we could actually put together a county and it'd be financially viable and feasible. That's not what we're doing, but I just mentioned that as if, you, if you have a financial wherewithal to, to substantiate a county, you certainly have the ability to do a city. Yeah, and, and in most, already in the bag. Uh, yeah, and just to contrast that with other cities, so I've I've worked on new city projects around the world actually, and um, you know usually you're talking talking about a, a, a clean sheet, ground up, no people live there, and that's a lot more challenging from a feasibility standpoint because you actually don't have people there paying taxes yet, so you have to bridge a gap from we're going to put in infrastructure to actually having the money to pay for it. This is about the easiest possible financial scenario you could imagine. And just for comparison, the city of Fernley has an annual operating budget of $11 million, but they have 23,000 people. So they're much larger than us. And, um, and we're sending Washoe County 23 million. So you do the math. And that's just property tax. It's only about half the budget. And that's overall. just property yeah. tax, and that's not all of the revenues that will be coming in. So as an example, no, this won't be our scenario, but like the city of Sparks, 40% of their revenue is C tax. Consolidated tax, sales tax primarily, but yeah, things like that. So those are things, and, those, and C tax will be something that will be coming to Incline Village, which we don't currently get. Yeah. And just as a rule of thumb uh, for you know budgets per cities, one to $2,000 a person is a, is a really quick and dirty way to think about a typical budget. Surprise, we have some questions about the beaches. <laughs> Wait a minute, I wasn't gonna show this because we were, I wanted to end on the comedy, but we have some, oh, I guess not, oh well. I was All gonna right. say, there's three things you don't need to ask about. The beach deed, <laughs> the transferring the cost, and we're not being created to raise taxes, but why not, we're here. Is there any possibility the state could force us to open our beaches to the public if we become a city? I don't think so, and we're taking every measure, again, I'll repeat, seven lawyers, three law firms looking at this and only this issue and looking at any threats to our beaches, because the one thing we are not going to go down in history causing is a change in the access and the exclusive privileges of for us to use our beaches. We're not, and that's a showstopper. 
if it comes true that what we're proposing here and asking you to consider threatens the beach, we're going to stop. We're going to say, bad idea, don't do it. Thank you. Okay, so that's, that's what I hope I don't have to say that. But uh, when I tell you how much, you know, how many people we have looking at this and how hard we have to look at this, know that we're doing our very, very best to make sure that there's no change in the beaches and that those rights that we have today are maintained, protected, and perhaps even improved. Yep. Um, yeah, now, this, I'll probably want to write a little more about that question, but it's a little, it's a little bit complicated because our neighbors over in California have a, a, a different scenario, and we unfortunately have uh, Nevada Division of State Lands that's lusting after to follow the model in California, which we absolutely have to prevent yeah. here in Nevada. So could the state do something? They could try, but we have to make sure that they either don't try or if they do attempt it, that that, is, that would be unsuccessful. And that, incidentally, is part of our review. And it's yep. not just the state. The question could be expanded to could Washoe County do something. And notice when we do the borders, there's no portion of, of Washoe County that's basically in Lake Tahoe. Excuse me. I mean, any part of, uh, of Washoe, Washoe County that's in Lake Tahoe is inside the borders of the right. city of Incline Village. Okay. No Santa Harbor Harbor's would in. be inside. Yep. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's already inside of Ivgid, you're maybe next door to your house, federally owned land, Nevada state owned land, Washoe County owned land. Because the ownership of the land is not relevant to the boundaries of the city. Yeah, the jurisdiction really applies to the services. So, for example, you know, where crimes committed, where they get prosecuted, who's responsible for what, who does what roads. There's state roads here, county roads, and so on. Good question. If Crystal Bay is included, will those residents get a free pass to the beaches? <laughs> All right, so I said we're going to protect the beach tee, and at this time, my answer is, or has to be, no. Uh, could that change someday? Maybe, but the starting point for protecting the beach tee is interpreting it literally. Um, this is actually, as you know, something that's, this is under the auspices of IVGID. <clears throat> and they make the choices there. And in fact, one of the reasons that we are currently proposing um, that the beaches stay with IVGID and not be in the city is for that reason. Yeah. Okay. And this is not the first time this kind of thing has happened. Does anyone know that the strip in Las Vegas was not part of the city of Las Vegas? As a city, will we truly be able to say no to TRPA, TTB, <laughs> For example, to huh. the mobility hub. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> okay, so I'll tell you about good news and bad news. So the bad news is TRPA is with us. It's not going away, and no city government or county government, you know, has the wherewithal to escape its grasp. Or state governments. Or state. It's a federal interstate compact. Yeah. So, however, and I do believe, and we will be seeking this, that our representative on the TRPA board in Washoe County will be from Incline Village, rather than. Mm -hmm. And I hope the same is true for TV. I mean, what sense does it make for Washoe County, for a Washoe County commissioner to sit on the TRPA governing board when there's no portion that isn't inside the city at Lake yep. Tahoe? So uh, we're looking for that. And uh, we are taking measures as we speak to begin the influence socializing that idea with TRPA and beyond. So 
So no, we won't. There will always be TRP. And we will, I think we'll have a good chance and we'll be on a solid platform uh, to cause them to improve their service to us. You know, there used to be a person at TRP dedicated just to looking at plans here who is long gone. So we need, to, we, we need to up their game. Right now, if you went in and tried to get something approved, and I'm sure there's someone here who's trying to do this, if you wanted to get like a new buoy in the lake or something like that, uh, you're looking at two years. They have 180 days to look at, review, and respond to your application. They haven't made it. They haven't made that deadline in a long, long time. They're failing. Uh, they're kind of getting off their mission. And they, they, you know, there needs to be change at TRPA, and I'm hoping that uh, we can help nurture them back to the place they need to be on their on their game. How would the school district be impacted? So when we looked at the pros and cons of county versus city versus town, that kind of thing. Uh, one of the things we had to give up on was anything to do with the school district. You know, we re recognize that the Washoe County and the Washoe County School District are completely different organizations. In fact, they hate each other. They're suing each other as we speak. <laughs> All right. Um, a schools are a county function. And we're not becoming a county, so the city of Incline Village will not be taking the schools. Now, having said that, uh, there, are, there has been a little bit of innovation here lately. I noticed the city of Las Vegas started its own school district. Mm -hmm. A charter district. A charter, yeah, so using charter, charter district rules, you can uh, During the pandemic. And, and there's uh, some of the people down there, including a specific uh, city council person, is planning on inducing legislation into the legislature in this upcoming session that might change the you know, opportunities for a city to address schooling. But at this 10 seconds, the answer is the schools are what they are, but the city won't be really changing them at all. And, and, if, you, and if you, or looking for improvement in the schools, uh, we're going to have to do some more work. I do think, as a city, uh, we've got to be a better place to address school problems than as an unincorporated area out in the corner of Washoe County. But basically, we're not really touching the schools. Yeah, I think uh, just as Todd you know mentioned, like the city is generally a, a platform for problem solving locally, being able to respond, detect, respond, and fix things. It certainly gives us more influence, and there is the potential with the platform to do something to improve the schools, uh, if that's something that's really important to the community. Where does IBGID fit into the city of Incline? All right. Um, this is, the answer to that question is going to depend on a lot of this homework and reviews that we're doing. Right now, IBGID uh, stays in the picture. We need them at least to cover the beaches. Uh, there will be some stuff that will no longer be under the IBGID umbrella. And I'll give you just one example. In order to uh, qualify for the consolidated tax that I mentioned earlier, we have to, the city has to do something in recreation. So we're going to want a park, you know, Preston Field or something like that. If you, uh, and this is where we really would appreciate your feedback. Uh, so it did, one of the big things it does, uh, we had a tremendous number of employees and money goes into this is recreation. You know, we got the golf course, we've got the ski resort, or so we got the beaches and on and on and on and on. If you like the way they're doing that and you want to maintain that, you keep that with it, it, it could become parks and recreations. But we're gonna have to, again, under the requirements of the city, we're going to have to do the, our streets ourselves. Washoe County will no longer uh, maintain our streets. It will become the responsibility of the city of Incline Village. Uh, when we do that, it probably makes sense to embrace what is otherwise known as the public works section of IBGID. But again, that's, that's part of the homework we're doing right now. 
So what you should think, you know, the shortest answer to that is, if it continues, its role is different and somewhat smaller, and the city will take some things. And even if you're intent, and we can do this in, in instantly just by changing the boundaries, even if your intent was to get rid of it, get it or to absorb it in the city, you wouldn't be doing that on the first day, right? You would think about coming in and doing a change management a, a, a company. You would start a process and a transition and you would take a decision, well, we think we need to move this from Indian into the city or not. But if you wanted to take the whole thing, you wouldn't do it in one day. It would be a long process, it would be a transition, and it would be orderly to produce a good, a good result. So the short answer is, if it lives on, it needs to live on, the way we see it, particularly because of the beaches. But the city ends up taking some of the things that it, it does in a very rational and logical way. Yeah, just, just to put some scale on that, um... So the requirement is uh, you have to have a few full-time employees in recreation. So that could be maintenance of a park. And that's kind of the, the minimum scale. It could be a new park, for example, though. So it uh, could certainly be left fully alone. And then that's also true, by the way, of the fire district, not touching the fire district. It will continue as, as is, as in that chart you saw earlier. <laughs> are we hoping to solve and how do we know a city is the answer to our problems? All right, do I? I think we covered that. Should I put for, on? For about 60 minutes. All right, so <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna shortcut that one because you know, I, I put up already a slide that listed a whole bunch of problems. I've got 14 pages, single space of problems here, um, the general categories of problems, and there's also opportunities, are things like, you know, is development, redevelopment, uh, ordinances that might uh, make it a little easier to, to live here with short-term rentals all around, um, parking, <coughs> snow plowing, I don't know if you notice that we, we don't even have painted sidewalks here in Incline Village. They, they were painted years ago and it's all worn out. You know, it's, a, it's a laundry list of stuff like that. But I think the single biggest thing is that when we want to change something or improve something, that we want to do it, if you will, our way, our preferences, our priorities, and let's not have a repeat of a, a bus hub in the middle of a city. It could be something much better and more useful. Yep. Yeah, just, just to add a little bit to that, I almost I'd kind of flipped the question to make it maybe um, a little more interesting, which is, you know, there's things we're not going to be able to change. We talked about TRPA. You know, it's going to be there. Uh, TTD is another different special district. We're not going to change state law. I'm actually working with a city in North Carolina right now that wants to take over a state-run highway that goes through the middle of the town. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, but it's a state-run highway. They control it. NDOT's in charge of it. And so they decide what happens, where, and when. And so those are things that we can influence, and we can actually partner with some of these agencies directly to make the changes we want to see. But they're going to be there, and um, you, know, you have, to be, have to have realistic expectations as well. Quick correction, in the uh, address here, it's village.league Don't. <laughs> at yahoo.com. We had some people who couldn't get that address. We have a new email, too. It's coming online. Cityofinclinevillage at gmail.com. Yeah. So that one yeah. might be easier to remember. Yay. Two quick money questions. Does a city have the same ability to charge fees and taxes as a GID? And how will revenue from sales tax be shared? Okay, so the, I'll take the sales tax one first since we did, that did come up earlier. The consolidated tax, which includes primarily sales tax and other stuff, is a giant messy thing that gets all brought up to the state level and then assigned with these formulas 
to the counties, which then further push them on to incorporated governments within their districts. So Washoe County gets a share of the statewide collection on this and then passes some, even some direct to IVGIT, for example. And I think it was back in 1999 around then, they changed the rules and set up these minimum requirements you had. And when Todd was referring to the Fernley problem, they actually set up their city with the belief or intent to get consolidated taxes, but they didn't check the three boxes. So they didn't get it. They didn't actually take over police, which you have to take over. They didn't take over enough of it. And so that's something that we're very careful about. And we're hoping to get our full share of consolidated tax by doing those things, including having the three park and rec people or whatever it is, right? Um, because that's gonna be worth it. On the first question was about uh, taxes and fees and stuff. Right? Ability to tax. Yeah, ability to tax. Yeah, so the, the, the city has a, um, a more um, uh, general, general ability to tax, but uh, just as you know, other governments are supposed to do, the, the taxes are supposed to come from everyone and go into the general fund and be used to benefit everyone. There's other subdivisions where you have fees which might go to support a particular, uh, particular activity. There's a thing called an enterprise fund where it's really like a business. It's supposed to be self-supporting. In, in many states, by law, it has to be. You're not allowed to subsidize that. So, um, you know, the, the constraints that would go on the city would be to, you know, reflect basically the best model of making sure the taxes are paying for things that benefit everyone and that fees are going to benefit those particular activities and the cost associated, the full cost associated with those activities so that you don't have taxpayers subsidizing uh, fees. And uh, in general, yeah, there's, there's more flexibility. Um, and certainly there's other options to create dependent districts and, and so on. And that's really not me or Todd. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, does that uh, cover the question? Okay. Uh, not on that question. Okay. What happens to the fire district? The fire district stays the same. Uh, we are drawing the boundaries of the city different than the fire district, which means nothing changes. It's, it will continue to uh, collect monies via property tax. You'll see that on the property tax bill, they're going to uh, execute the exact same mission as they do now. And it's one of those things where our position is, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. But, you know, that could change in the future, but that's, that's where we think with the fire district. It's enough work to create a new city. <laughs> yeah, this isn't all that easy. Yeah. And, um, so if it's, if it's doing okay, we just leave it alone. Yeah. What does Crystal Bay get out of this? <laughs> okay, so I think, I think we're proposing a situation, and I hope we can sign up for this, which is you know, all boats rise together and the alternative for, to, to exclude Crystal Bay from the city to me would be some form of <laughs> would be a very bad, let's just say abuse. abuse, a very bad idea to have little Crystal Bay out in the corner of Washoe County all by itself. And if you think that if you really want to ignore it, that's, the, that's what you do. So uh, what Crystal Bay gets to do is become you know an integrated part of a well-run government in a prosperous community and and basically benefit from having the best government in the united states of america that's not something i want to pass up so you know, what they go ahead clap i mean <laughs> Unless you so, don't like it. You know, what, they, 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 there's everything for them to lose if they don't come aboard. And we don't have to include them. Uh, um, there's only, what, 300 here? There's 9,000 in Inkland Village, about 300 in Crystal Bay. Uh, you know, the kids all go to the same schools. You know, there's just not a good reason to push them out. They should be included. Uh, I think they'll prosper by being included. And, and there's a lot of great people in Crystal Bay too, so we want them in our community to be part of this. Is the is the short answer? Did you have anything to add, Kevin? 
No, amen. Well, we are approaching 7.30, which I believe is yep. our time. So again, we have uh, entered all of your questions that you turned in. Um, Todd and Kevin and other volunteers will be going through them. Please check the website for the frequently asked questions. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming. Great questions. Know that you all are part of this journey. This is not something where it's going to be done to you. It's it's a group effort. We appreciate anybody who wants to raise their hand and volunteer to help because there's plenty of work.